Good morning, good morning, and praise the Lord. It's certainly an honor and a privilege on today to join in with you as we are celebrating our anniversary. Dominion Tabernacle is celebrating 18 years of ministry on today. And this time we have a presentation that we wanted to share with you, our, our uh, viewers. So we just thank you for your faithfulness over the past 18 years and how God has en enabled us to continue in ministry. So when we started out on this journey, we had no idea what God had in store for us. Um, but on today, we just want to say congratulations to the members of the Dominion Tabernacle Church and as we celebrate 18 years. So we're going to do a timeline for you on today. You can see some of our memories that we have for the ministry. Um, Dominion Tabernacle was officially founded on August the 8th of 20, uh, 2003, and we became incorporated on August the 21st, 2003. And our founding members are listed here on today. Our elder Charles Lucas is our pastor, Minister Felicia Lucas as the administrative pastor, Sister Janet Sanders, Sister Ernestine Lyons, and our two youth at the time were Isaiah and Kelsey Lucas. Uh, our first Bible study was held on Tuesday, September the 9th, as that was in the year 2003 at the home of our sister Janet Sanders. And our first worship service was conducted on Sunday, September the 14th in 2003 at 800 Planter Street in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. Our motto for our church is where God's will is the dominant factor. And we were founded on the scripture that's found in Genesis chapter 1 and 28. And I want to read that one today. And it says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Our mission here at Dominion Tabernacle has been we have been commissioned by God to empower generations through our practical teachings of the Word of God. And not only do we do practical teachings, but we're also very active in the community. Um, over the years, we've done several retirement um, ministries, one in Windmill, North Carolina, another one in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. But we're also partnering with our nonprofit, which is Save by Force Ministries Incorporated, as we do work in the community. So there's a few pictures I'm going to show you over the years, and you'll see how um, we have had an opportunity to serve individuals all over our region, uh, and now worldwide, thanks to technology, you guys are also a part of what we do in the community. And so we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your faithfulness and to uh, support the ministry over the years. And you know, you guys show up every week, and we just thank you on behalf of the Dominion Tabernacle Church on today. So as we look at the faithfulness of God, this is like I would say one of our anthems that we have in reference to how we celebrate what God has done on today. So we just invite you to sing along with us this song, and it says, Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have need is thy hand. 
gives us each and every year. Mm. All that we have needed, hallelujah, we can say that God has provided. And thank you, God, for your faithfulness unto us. And at this time, we will transition as we will receive the word of the Lord on today from our very own pastor and founder, Elder Golden Beauty. Amen. Out our social media uh, page there you can find all of our social media platforms and we'll be encouraging as always to, to uh, subscribe and to like and follow that way you can be abreast as to what we have uh, going on on a regular basis. Um, please be reminded of our upcoming initiative we have coming up on the 21st this month at 7:30 a.m. We're excited about our youth life initiative, My Life Matters. So you can, you can go on and uh, register if you want to uh, just join us via Zoom. There's a Zoom link, and also we're going to be Facebook Live uh, Thursday, September the 23rd at 730. 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. And then the following uh, Thursday, the 30th, we'll have our Wednesday hour for reception hour for our initiative for our youth, young adult men, youth and young adult men at the age of 12. For a few minutes is to start, uh, talk to you from the subject, keep walking with the Lord. Amen. Keep walking with the Lord. And, you know, as we celebrate our 18th year here at Dominion, I'm just thankful for the opportunity uh, that we have been afforded as we continue to serve Him in the capacity uh, that we do. And I think that it's appropriate uh, that looking on this 
to provide an answer. He wanted to provide an answer. Um, the thing that you understand about Luke, of course, is that he was very um, deliberate in his research. He was very orderly in his research. And when he had uh, presented it, he wanted to make sure that in there um, were factual, the factual information that would help answer questions that may arise, any doubt amongst those unbelievers that may arise. He wanted to make sure that he provided uh, the thorough answer. Thirdly, uh, he wanted to reconcile anything that may have been out of sync, anything that may have been out of order. He wanted to make sure that when he presented this work, he wanted it to be right, he wanted it to be in order. And then fourthly, he wanted to preserve wanted to preserve God's original intent. He wanted to present Christ as, as who he was and as God had intended Christ to be. And so that makes sense that when you think about who Luke was, he wanted to strengthen, he wanted to provide answers, he wanted to reconcile and make sure everything was in order, and he wanted to preserve. Mm -hmm. And that makes sense. You know, when you think about in this profession as a doctor, doctors are entrusted to do what? Strengthen, provide answers when something is wrong, put things in proper order, and to help do what? Preserve and prolong life. You know? So that's what we have here with Luke. Now all today, I think that we tap into the first purpose of wanting to strengthen. Basis, and regardless of what comes, regardless of what goes, you have to keep doing it. Well, you don't have to, you know, you can stop at any time, right. and, but you choose to continue to do the work of the Lord uh, regardless of what circumstances come, yes, regardless yes. of what goes. And so, you know, on today, on today, I think it's this is what this here is, is designed to strengthen the individual. Now, you know, he was writing this to Theophilus. to Theophilus in order. There's that key word there again, order. So now as we look at, as we look at uh, the word of the Lord on today, coming out of verse number five, let's take a look here as we begin and as we start, his, his interpretation here. It says, there was in the days of Herod, there was in the days of Herod, the king of Judah, the king of Judah, a certain priest. Now, here's the key. Here's the key. Is that he starts out here, he gets the ball rolling, 
And I think that it's appropriate that he utilizes the character that the priest represents. Mm -hmm. Well, the priest represents stewardship. I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it in a minute. Mm -hmm. Stewardship. Yes. You start the ball rolling, get the ball rolling with an individual that represents stewardship. Mm -hmm. Well, the priest represented the steward over the temple. Okay. If there was anything going on in the temple, if there was any orderly service, if there was anything being facilitated in the temple, the priest was responsible for it. All right? So he starts out with, with the steward. Now, here's the thing you understand about the priest. Responsible for the activity. Mm -hmm. The priest was responsible for the activity that went on within the temple. Now, how is that relevant? To us as individuals. Well, let's see here. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Turn there for me. Alright. Now, when you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, because again, we started with what? The priest. Right. We started with the individual who who's supposed to exercise what? Stewardship. We're starting off talking about the individual who is responsible for all engaged activities that occur within the what? In the temple. So now to find relevancy to that, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Because you want to find yourself in the scripture here. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. 1 Corinthians 6, 19, Paul lets the people at Corinth know. He says, what? Do you all not know mm -hmm. that your body is the what? Temple. So then you have to realize and understand then that your body represents a temple. So just as Luke starts off talking about the priest, okay, and the priest is the one who is what? Responsible for all activities that are engaged upon with what? Within the temple. So are, so, so am I a temple. You are a temple. And God has given you the responsibility of stewardship. 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 Which means then, as a steward, I am responsible mm -hmm. for all activity, don't say that, all activities yes. that go on within this temple right here. Yes. Stewardship. Luke starts the conversation off talking about the one who is responsible for stewardship. Paul says to the church at Corinth, he says to the, to the people, that he says, do you not know that your body is the temple? Your body. Your body represents a gift from the Lord. Yes. Your body is a gift from the Lord. Because he says that, he says that, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, mm -hmm. which ye have of God. Yes. Now, not only that is the body a gift from the Lord, but also your body represents an opportunity. What do you mean? Yes, your body, it's a gift from God, yeah. and it represents an opportunity. Your body represents an opportunity. <laughs> Heart has limited space. Mm. And there are many 
anything in your life that would compete for that space. Mark 11 and Mark 22 talks about it. I'm just reading these scriptures. The first Corinthians 6, 9, 10 represents things that compete for that space that's in your heart. And the challenge is, the challenge of the heart is like David said in Psalm 6, 1. Create in me a clean heart. A clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. That's what it's about, having a clean heart. Amen. Watch this, watch this. Because when I have a clean heart, then I can engage in walking with the Lord. Because see, David understood. He understood it clearly. He said, Lord, you got to create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Because he understood the process. He understood the process. He said, don't throw me away, Lord, because of what I've done. <laughs> and don't take your holy presence from me. Yes. That's good. That's good right there. Don't take it from me. You gave it to me, Lord. Don't take it from me. He said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation and uphold me with thy, free spirit, with thy free spirit. If you do that, Lord, if you create in me a clean heart, yes. renew a right spirit, don't throw me away. <laughs> don't take your presence from me. Restore me. Yes. Now all this right there in Psalm 51, 10, 11, 12, verse 13. He said, then, 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 he said, mm. he understood that there had to, that he, his heart had to be cleansed. He had to have the right spirit about it. He said, then will I teach transgressors thy ways. Mm. Only then, only then. And so, and so understanding then, understanding then that the heart has to go through that cleansing process. And when you do that, when you walk with the Lord, then you find yourself over here. <laughs> doing what it is he called you to do, you know. A great example, uh, Jesus said, my need is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. So the gift of God the, the, to us in our, our physical bodies is an opportunity for us to think and to what and to do what it is he has called us to do. That's about being a good steward over, the, over your body. But now, watch this, watch this, though. The challenge is, what type of activities do you allow your temple to engage in? Amen. That's the challenge. Yes, yes. That's, the ch that's the challenge of the priest, is to watch out for what kind of activities are engaged in the temple. Jesus, when he came, when he came, during Passover, he came. It was a very festive time. It was, it was a very busy time. Yeah. When he came, he went into the temple and he found them. He found unauthorized activities. They were selling. They were exchanging money. They were doing everything in the temple except what was supposed to be done. They weren't being good stewards. So what did Jesus have to do? He had to go in there and do what? And clean it out. Why? Because they were, they were engaged in activities that were not bringing God glory. Mm -hmm. and, I, and, I, and, that's what, and that's what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6, 20. He says, for ye are bought with a price. Yes. Therefore, glorify God. That's the role. That's the, mm -hmm. that, that's the goal. That's the goal. Is that you glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Yeah. That's the goal for all of us in here. Me too. Oh, yeah. But see, we realize and understand, though, that we are challenged in life with the, with the, with the what I call it, the smorgasbord. Mm. You know what a smorgasbord is. It's a, it's, a, it's a great big old spring of food where you have so many different options, so many different uh, varieties. Let me say it like that. The challenge is that life presents us with so many different kinds of 
activity. Right, right. Uh, uh, First Corinthians 6, 9, 10. I'm right there, I'm staying right there in that same chapter. Mm. Our activity is fornication, idolatry, adultery, homosexuality, thieves, covetousness, drunkenness, revivals, extortioners. All different kinds of activity. Mark 7, 21 through 22, picks up the same, the same thing. And, you know, when you study the Bible, especially when you study, you know, we talk, when you study Paul, and, and you study the ministry of Christ, they were really big on, especially Christ, he was, he was big on what's the heart, what's in the heart, what's in the heart, because he was concerned with the heart. They were walking, you know, during his time, they were walking around concerned about washing your hands, having clean hands. You know, but Jesus' thing was, is your hands don't make you dirty. What makes you dirty is what's on the inside, is what's in your heart. Yeah. The heart first. You see? Yeah. And slowly and slowly, it makes sense to me then that Luke would start the ball rolling with talking about the priest, the one who yeah. exercises stewardship yeah. over the activities that go on inside the temple. Now, let's keep going. Let's, let's keep going here. Let's keep going here. Let's keep going. We're back in Luke now. All right, Luke. He says there was a certain priest, and he names out who the priest, who this man was, Zacharias. Yeah. And he was of the course of Abijah. Abijah. All right, and we'll, and we'll talk about that a little bit later on because one one of the things you understand is that the priests were given a schedule. Okay. They were given a schedule, and, and, and that was done by David. And when David, because you know David had put all the pieces in place to build God a temple, but David didn't do that. His son did. And so what David did is that, and we'll talk about this later. But he passed on all the logistics, all the blueprint, all the detail, on to his to his son Solomon. So, so but what was included in there was a schedule, because here you know you have the temple, you got to have people in there to facilitate it. Right. And so and so that, and so then. And so that's when it says of the course of Abijah that deals with that talk about the scheduling. All right, now it said now this, this priest he had a wife, mm -hmm. had a wife, and her name was Elizabeth. So we have this couple here, and they were and, and, and so they were both. Um, well, it goes on there in verse six. Verse six, he said, and they were both what righteous. So it gives us a little bit about their character here. Yeah. Ah, uh, because, you know, anytime you're talking about being a good steward over something, it deals with what? Character. Character. Yeah. Character. It's who you are. Who you are. Character. So he said that they were both righteous before God. Goes on, he says there, and they what? They walk in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord. So it tells them a little, it gives us a little idea then as to how these two individuals govern, govern themselves. Yeah. How was their walk with the Lord? What they thought and what they did. They had some righteousness about themselves. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Now, I said, I said a few minutes ago, I said a few minutes ago, that one of the purposes of Luke's gospel here, the gospel according to Luke, is to strengthen. Mm -hmm. So right off the bat here, I think, I think this is good here because it, it shows in verse 6, it shows how important faith is in the individual's life. Yes, right. Ah, yeah. He starts off, before he gets into anything else, he starts off really with the faith walk. How is your faith walk? How is your foundation? Oh Lord, have mercy! You gotta be. You, it is our. It is our. You have, you have to be. You have to be a, a godly priest. You have to be a godly steward over your body. Mm. He says that how you walking. How you walking? In other words, the Lord is interested in how you are walking in your life. Yes. How are you walking? How are you walking? Now these, now these, here's these two individuals here, walking in all the in all the quote, commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Which means they had a certain level of righteousness about themselves. Why could they be classified as that? Well, it says 
They were righteous before the Lord, and they did what? And they walked with the Lord. They put forth effort. They put work in. They put some sweat equity in there. Yes. It takes work, Lord have mercy. And you know, and, and there's no coincidence that we're talking about. If you want to reach the anniversary of anything, you better make sure that you have a solid foundation, and you want to make sure that you put some sweat equity into it. Because if you don't put the work into it that is required, you won't see too many anniversaries. Oh, I'm talking now. I'm talking now. I'm, and I'm not talking about marriage anniversaries. I'm talking about business anniversaries. Uh, I'm, there are so many different kinds of anniversaries that you can celebrate. But each year that comes with that anniversary, if you reflect back over it, I guarantee you there has to be some effort put forth. He said, walking in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord, blameless. Mm -hmm. But now he goes on and he gives us a little bit more in-depthness mm -hmm. in the life of these two individuals. He starts with, with the woman first. With Zachariah's wife. Starts off in verse 7, it says, and they what? They had no child. Didn't have a child. Why didn't they have a child? Because hmm. he was he's very detailed. Yes. Yes. And marketed. Yep, that's it. That was his that was his job. He said, because that Elizabeth was what? Barren. Barren. Now, let's talk about that word barren for a minute. The word barren. Well, there are quite a few definitions in there in the, mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the dictionary when you look up the word barren. Well, oftentimes when you hear the word barren, a couple of definitions that, that, that come to mind uh, incapable, mm. failure, non productive. Outdated. Those are just some common definitions. But there's another but there's another meaning also of the word barren. And that meaning that, that definitely meaning is uh, means just like here. Not yet. Mm. Right? You don't hear that definition too often. Mm -mm. It's not <laughs> yet it is. Not yet. Watch this here. He says there, it says there, it says, because that Elizabeth was barren. Mm -hmm. In other words, now don't classify her as being incapable. Don't classify her as being a failure. Don't classify her as being non-productive. Don't classify her as being inferior. Don't classify her as being fruitless. And even though she was up there in age, don't classify her as being outdated. Rather, classify her as being barren as you're not yet pregnant. In other words, not yet. Not yet. Because, you know, she is, she is far from being incapable. She is far from being a failure. She is far from being non-productive. She is far from being inferior. She is far from being fruitless. She is far from being outdated. Why? Verse 6. She is far from being those things that I just mentioned because what? She has a solid relationship with the Lord. And because she has that solid relationship with the Lord, yes, she's barren, but it's a not yet barren. <laughs> See, when you're in a relationship with the Lord, there's always what? 
opportunity because according to Paul, that's really why he gave you his, that's why he gave you the body that you have is because that body represents an opportunity for you to produce what? Fruit. And that fruit may not necessarily come in the form of a, you got to understand what your fruit is. You gotta understand what your fruit is. Yeah. It's about timing. Yeah. It's about timing. And see, we have to be careful. We have to be careful that you do not allow man to classify you, the yeah. world to classify you. Yeah. Because if you're not careful, yeah. you will allow society to put a label on you, yes. and you'll end up feeling. Less than who God created you to be. But it's your relationship with Him that's going to make all the difference. Yes. It's going to make all the difference. Watch this, watch this. So, so with Elizabeth, she was barren. Not yet. Timing. Timing. Timing is everything. Watch this here. It says, for she was barren, and they were both, her and her husband were both what? They were both stricken in years. So you're talking about an old couple here. You're talking about an old couple here. But the, the root, the, the basis of what I'm talking about on today, though, is in verse 6. Because notice, it talks about, it, it talks about their relationship with the Lord before it even got into their personal business. Mm. Mm. Uh, I, I said, Luke emphasized their walk with the Lord first yeah. Yeah. before he started getting into their home life. Mm -hmm. Because your relationship with the Lord is going to determine the, the quality of everything else that follows behind you. Come on, great. Because you can't, you can't put everything else before the Lord. Come on now. He comes first. You want to talk about so you want to talk about regulating activity that goes on inside the temple. Lord have mercy. It starts with what relationship? Because relationship with the Lord is going to help dictate to you. Oh, this can't stay in here. This has got to go. You got to clean this up. If you allow this, if you make a room for this. Oh, come on, talk to me, talk to me. Oh, we can, we, you know how it is. We've been there. You go, you make a room for that spirit. You make a room for it. You get a bed for it. You get the linens right next to it. You get the flip flop. You get the slippers right here. You go. You can stay right here. I got it all decked out for you. But when you're in a relationship with the Lord, the Lord comes and says, "You can't let that spirit stay in there. You can't let that spirit sleep in your house. You gotta clean it up." That's the difference. When you're walking with the Lord versus staying in the world. Because when you stay in the world, you let that spirit stay there all night long. You entertain it from sun up to sundown. But at some point in time, your relationship with the Lord, your walk with the Lord is going to kick in. Right. You got to go. It's a daily walk. Verse 8, verse 8. It says, and it came to pass. That's key right there. And it came to pass. It came to pass deals with time. Yes. When you talk about the anniversary of a thing, you deal with what? With the time. Over the course of time. Time came and went. Days, hours came and went. Days come and go. Weeks come and go. Months come and go. Years come and go. People come and go. And it came to pass. That were all and, 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 and as time passed, she was still barren. They were still getting old and aged. They were still getting old. But as time passed, verse 8, it says, and it came to pass that while he executed, somebody say executed. Execute. Uh, execute, execute, something 
mean to what? To perform. It means to do. It means to, it means to make it happen. It means to put in some sweat equity. That as time went on and, and his wife was still barren, but not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. While she was still in her not yet state, it says he what in verse 8? He executed. He performed. Yeah. He kept on doing what his responsibility was. Yes, Lord. If you ever want, if you ever want to get to Lord have mercy, if you ever want to get to an anniversary date. Oh, you got to keep doing what it is you've been called oh, to do. do. You don't stop. Yes, but you do what? You keep going. Yes. As hours come, as hours pass, as days pass, as weeks pass, as months pass, guess what? You still do what it is you're supposed to do. Yes. You keep doing it. You keep doing it. You, what? you stay with it. You stay with it. You stay with it. It says, and it came to pass that while he executed, while he performed the priest's office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. While he continued to do what it was God had called him to do back in verse number five. trying to encourage someone. <laughs> yes. I believe he's trying to strengthen someone right here. Yes. Uh, no, matter, no, matter what, no matter what the outlook may look like, but just keep on keeping on. Yes. Just keep on going. Ah, uh, yeah, you're getting old. Yeah, you're getting up there in age, but guess what? Just keep on keeping on. Yes. It says he executed the priest's office before God in the order of what? Of his course. He worked his schedule. He worked his schedule. He did what it was God had to hold him to do. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes. Look at what it says there. Verse, verse 9. Verse 9. Now, it says, according to the custom of the priest's office, what was his responsibility? Now, this is key right here. Verse 9. Verse 9. Look what it says there. Yes. Zachariah's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Zachariah's duty. Mm -hmm. Zachariah's job as a steward was yes. to do what, according to verse 9? Was to burn incense. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. That was his role. That was his duty. Mm -hmm. That was his responsibility when he went to work in the temple. of that. All right? Mm -hmm. Turn to Exodus chapter 30 for just a minute. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 30. Mm -hmm. Exodus chapter 30 mm -hmm. and uh, verses uh, verses 6 through 8. That's what Zachariah's responsibility was. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter if his wife was barren, if she was still barren, he had a responsibility. His responsibility was to do what? Make sure that the incense was burning. Yes, Lord. Make sure that the incense was burning. Exodus chapter 36 through 8. Let's see here what it says there. Look what it says there. Exodus chapter 30, verse 6. It says there. Well, verse 5. And thou shalt make the, the poles of shittim wood and overlay them with gold. And thou shalt put it before the veil that is by the ark of the testimony, mm -hmm. before the mercy seat that is over the testimony, mm -hmm. where I will meet with thee there. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, no, go back to verse 1 in that chapter. Let's go back to that verse 1 in that chapter. Mm -hmm. Chapter Exodus 30, verse 1. And thou shalt make an altar. Mm -hmm. Altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of it, it's a, it was a it was a it was a place of a form of worship unto the Lord to burn incense upon it. All right, and now it goes into the logistics as to 
the, uh, the, the what power it was supposed to look and, and the, 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 the dimensions and all that, the, the, the blueprint, okay? Right. But now verse 7, go to verse 7. And Aaron, now Aaron, of course, he was, he was, he was the high priest. And the high priests, they were responsible for the activities that went on within the temple. Aaron shall do what? Burn thereon sweet incense. When? Every, every morning. Every morning. There has to be a certain level of consistency there. Every morning. When he dresses the lamps, he shall do what? Burn incense upon it. And when Aaron lighted the lamps, at what? At evening. So you got the morning and you have what? The evening. So this was so this was this was to be a part of their relationship with the Lord. This was a part of that. This is how that this was their, this is how the Lord wanted them to worship. It says there. And when the light, and when Aaron lighted the lamp at even, he shall burn incense upon of incense upon it. A perpetual, perpetual means what? It continues. Perpetual incense before the Lord. How long? Throughout your generations. What does that incense represent? That incense represents. Hmm. Continuous, perpetual prayer. What is prayer? Conversation with the Lord. Lord. Yes, yes. The Lord wanted perpetual communication, perpetual communion with his people. Hmm. Now, what you have in the Old Testament is a very detailed, systematic approach to that. But when you get into the New Testament, under the new covenant that that, 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 that that comes with Jesus Christ, what you realize, like Paul said, come on, do you not know that your body is a temple now? And that you have the capacity to commune and to fellowship with the Lord as often as you like as you would like to? That was the order. That was the order. That was, that was the priesthood order. Now, now, that, now I want to show you. Now go back to Luke. Go back to Luke chapter 1. Because what we understand now is that Zacharias and Elizabeth, they came after the order of who? Aaron. Yes, and so it makes sense then that Zacharias' responsibility over there in verse number 9 of Luke chapter 1, his duty was to burn incense Whenever he went into the what? Into the temple of the Lord. Amen. Why was that significant? Why was that important? Because, because they understood that when the incense was burning, mm -hmm. then that represented what? Prayer. And it even stood at verse 10. It says, and the whole multitude of the people were doing what? Praying. Outside at the what time of what incense? So Zechariah had a very important role. He was like the prayer facilitator. That was his role. He was the prayer facilitator. That was his job. That was his responsibility. But now, what? Is, what look though. You know, here he was being the prayer facilitator. Helping, helping others, encouraging others in their prayer life. When there were things in his life that could have been better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because his wife was still, what, barren. Yes, Lord. Time hadn't come mm -hmm. yet. Mm -hmm. But even during that time of barrenness, Zacharias still had the responsibility to do what? Burn. Because whenever they, because whenever, like it says in verse 10, and the whole multitude of the people were praying outside at the what? At the time of incense. 
So Zechariah had a very important role. He had a very important responsibility to do it. Even though everything at home may not have been like he like they had wanted it to be, he still had a responsibility to do it. You keep walking with the Lord, yeah. and you keep performing the duty that the Lord has called you to do because it's helping out others. Yeah. And sometimes you have to understand, you know, you have to you have to help other people facilitate theirs mm -hmm. while yours is still in not yet mode. Oh, wow. Sometimes you have to learn how to help people facilitate theirs while yours is in not yet mode. Because he still had to do his priestly duties and still go back home to a wife that was barren. Not yet mode. Because if you remain, you got to read, but here's the thing you have to remain faithful to what it is God has called you. Regardless of what comes, regardless of what goes, you hang in there anyway. anyway. That's how anniversaries come about. When you hang on in there anyway, you maintain your purpose, you maintain your cause, and you stay focused. You, you, listen, you fall down, but you get up, yeah. you keep right on going. You keep right on going. You stay on schedule. You stay on schedule. And that's what and that's what his responsibility was. And, and we're gonna look at on next week. We're gonna look at on next week. What happened? <laughs> mm -hmm. What happened? Because see, see, you don't you don't stop. You don't stop doing what it is God has called you to do. Because you don't know at what point that not yet turns into okay, now it's time. Amen. But if you stop, you, you don't stop. You keep you keep on doing what it is he's called you to do. Because you never know. You don't know at what point in time he says, okay, now it's time to shift. Now it's time to breathe. But see, but if you stop, yeah. that's why you gotta stay. You have, you have you have to you have to maintain your you have to keep that walk with yeah. the Lord. Have to keep that relationship with him, regardless of what comes, regardless of what goes. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to stay with him. And so I would encourage, I would encourage the individuals on today that, that are tuning in. You know, it goes back to what I said at the beginning. It starts with the relationship. It starts with the relationship. And the way to have the right relationship with God is through His Son. So there's, there's some of those ladies watching on today and say, you know what? I don't know who Jesus is. Mm -hmm. I got so many things going on in my life right now. Well, you know, Christ died for me. Yes, yes. And he died for me. Whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is you, whatever type of lifestyle you're in, Christ died for you. Mm -hmm. That you might have life and have it more abundantly. But it starts with you making a decision to accept him as Lord and Savior. If that's you on today, say, you know what? I need Jesus in my life. I need him. I need a relationship with the Lord Jesus. If that's you, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And it doesn't matter, again, it doesn't matter where you where you are, what you've done. But it starts with you today, making a life choice, making a life decision. Okay. Just, just say it and pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus. I believe that you were buried, and I believe that God raised you from the dead, and that you live now and forever. Come into my life right now as my Lord and Savior. 
I surrender my life to you right now. I surrender my all to you right now. I receive you yes. into yes. my heart yes. as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Listen, we, we hope that that something has been said to motivate and to encourage you on today. If that was you and you prayed that prayer, go to our website, takeitbyfaith.net and email us. Email us. We have a book that we want to send you. It's called Now What? A guidebook for new Christians. We want to get you some free resumes and we want to follow up with you. It's a great day for me. And we want to celebrate the decision that you have made to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to our website today, takeitbyfaith.net and drop us an email and tell us what the Lord has done for you. We want to follow up with you. But we'll be ready to close out in prayer on today. Father, we pray Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study your word. Yes, Lord. Pray, God, that something is said that will encourage, that will motivate, that will inspire the individual. Lord, for the one who is saved and for the one who knows, knows you and has a relationship with you, Lord, we pray, God, that something was said today to strengthen them yes, where they are. Yes. You know where they are. You, you know the circumstance. You know the situation. But, Lord, we pray for their faith on today that their faith would be just as strong as it ever has been. Uh, some are faced with circumstances and situations that they don't know which way to go, which way to turn. But Lord, we pray today, God, that they will be renewed, that they will be renewed in their faith and renewed in their relationship with you. We pray for families. We pray for parents. We pray for the, for the children. We pray for the, those guardians who have been given responsibility over households. We pray for stewardship on today. Yes, Lord. Oh, we pray for stewardship in our government, Lord, on all, on all, in all, in our, on all branches, on all levels, Lord. Yes, God. Oh, we just pray right now, Lord, that, that you will allow the, the hearts, the hearts to be challenged in this hour. We thank you right now, Lord, and we bless you. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless at his coming. To him be the glory, honor, and glory. Well, listen, thank you so much for tuning in with us on today. We we'll look forward to being back with you again real soon. As a reminder, please remember to check out our podcast every Friday, every Friday at 1230. Uh, you can find the link on our website in collaboration with Spread the Gospel Net. Like I said, every Friday at 1230. But until then, we look forward to seeing you back here uh, real soon. Take care and God.